Hi, Sean McCracken here with Richard Stockton, President and CEO of Braemar Hotels and Resorts. So Richard, um, I noticed that Braemar had kind of a, a different asset strategy in 19. It seemed more like tending to your existing portfolio, you know, improving your assets. Can you kind of walk me through what was the thinking there in the past year and is that going to be the strategy going forward into the new year? Yeah, really over the past two years, we've invested into our own portfolio more than ever before. And we had three major capital expenditure projects that we were pursuing that were the final stages of our strat strategic plan that we implemented three years ago uh, to position the portfolio exactly where we wanted it to be, which is predominantly luxury, highest rev par in the lodging sector. And those projects included uh, conversions of the uh, Philadelphia Courtyard and the San Francisco Courtyard to autograph by Marriott Collection. We finished the Philadelphia conversion and unveiled the new hotel, now called the Notary, in July of 2019. Mm -hmm. And in San Francisco, we'll be opening the Clancy at the end of this quarter, uh, which is the new autograph collection there. The third major capital expenditure project was, of course, the uh, renovation and refurbishment of the Ritz-Carlton and St. Thomas, mm -hmm. which is recovering from Hurricane Irma. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with our focus and attention really on that, uh, we didn't pursue very many acquisitions. That said, we did acquire one hotel, which is the Ritz-Carlton in Lake Tahoe, for yeah. $120 million in January of last year. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of walk me through the St. Thomas project, because I know mm -hmm. that was a years-long thing, and obviously um, Hurricane was a big impact there. So what's, yeah. what's the process been like? Um, and, and how do you feel about the end product today? I'd say I couldn't be happier with how smooth the process went, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a tragic event, first yeah. thing, right, for the island and the people that live there, and uh, our hearts go out to them. But uh, for shareholders in Braemar, it ended up being a very favorable thing to happen. Mm -hmm. Firstly, uh, we were prepared. Mm -hmm. So we had staged supplies in uh, nearby Puerto Rico in anticipation of the hurricane. So immediately in the aftermath of the hurricane, we had people on planes down there, helicopters over to St. Thomas because the airport was closed, mm -hmm. and supplies arriving through our disaster recovery specialists. We then worked very quickly and closely with our insurance companies, and we have a, a participation in a major umbrella insurance policy mm -hmm. that enabled us to start recovering business interruption within a month after the event, yeah. which is unprecedented. The process with the insurance companies was very collaborative, uh, very cooperative. Uh, we, um, in the end, will recover uh, over $40 million of business interruption. Mm -hmm. We'll um, do uh, between 70 and $80 million of property loss settlement. Uh, and that is a full reinstatement of all 180 guest rooms of the hotel, mm -hmm. so everything is brand new. A new family pool, uh, which you know we paid for as outside mm -hmm. because it's an addition to the hotel but uh, redone restaurants, uh, new um, cabanas by the ocean. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's really a wonderful, fantastic resort, clearly one of the top resorts in the Caribbean now. Do you see that as a long-term hold? Because it seems like um, there's less and less U.S. REITs holding assets outside of really the mainland U.S., mm -hmm. I mean, with the exception of Hawaii. Is that a, a long-term hold property for I'll you? I'll tell you, uh, one of the reasons, then we've seen this in the acquisitions market, when we're looking at new opportunities in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons is there is a fear of uh, the risk management associated yeah. with a hurricane event. Yeah. And our experience has shown that actually we can work through it and, and end up in a very favorable place. Mm -hmm. We were able to fully renovate a, a hotel, which would have been due for renovation in the coming yeah, years anyway, yeah. without any uh, disruption mm -hmm. in, in the business, because we're recovering the, the business interruption from the insurance company. Mm -hmm. So by having this policy, that's a strategic advantage and a competitive advantage to us. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're very happy owning that asset in the Caribbean, and we'll look to acquire other ones. Mm -hmm. I think for us, uh, the one constraint is uh, currency. Yeah. You know, and we do want to only invest in dollar-based or dollar-linked uh, uh, jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. And so we have to, to pick and choose yeah. you know, where, where we'll invest in the Caribbean. But in general, we see that as an attractive market. The cap rates tend to be a bit higher. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the prospects are certainly very strong in terms of tourism. Uh, so no, it's, it's a place that will be for a while. Now, what are you generally seeing in the transactions market <clears throat> right now? Well, you see, in 2019, the transaction market was down. Yeah. Right? So it's about 15% less in terms of volume. Mm -hmm. uh, We've seen that in our pipeline of mm -hmm. opportunities. Uh, you know, it's, it's in part fueled by seller expectations on pricing. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, the debt markets are very favorable, which helps buyers, but it also helps sellers mm -hmm. to recapitalize and 
uh, delay a potential sale if they're not getting the price that they want and if there's no strategic imperative to sell. Yeah. And so uh, we're seeing you know, buyers and sellers you know, not meeting up as often as they had in the past. I expect that to continue in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing that uh, is happening in the market, there is a little bit of a dose of realism yeah. in that everyone has seemed to have gotten on board with very tepid RevPAR growth for 2020, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, expense growth in excess of that. Yeah. Uh, so, so long as sellers understand that, uh, I think they'll be able to meet with buyers on price. But because of that environment, you also see a lot of sellers holding back and refinancing instead. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, as it relates, which to you guys did a lot of it uh, last year, a lot of refinancing. We did, and and we we don't have any hard maturities until 2022 mm -hmm. now. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have a very uh, you know clear path in terms of refinancing. Uh, mm -hmm. We can opportunistically pursue refinancing, and each time that we have over the last three years, it's been mm -hmm. to reduce our spread mm -hmm. and save costs and generate incremental AFFO. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we'll continue to look at that. The, the debt market's again very favorable. Spreads are compressing, yeah. not worryingly so though. Yeah. And I think when we looked at the uh, you know 2007 credit crisis, if you remember, mm -hmm. um, you could tell that there was something wrong. Yeah. Right? Risk was not being priced correctly. Mm -hmm. And you had uh, CMBS securitizations. You had the triple A's going off at you know single digit spreads. Didn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not seeing that. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're very comfortable that the debt markets are efficient, mm -hmm. that lenders uh, are showing constraint. Uh, they are, they do have uh, rigorous underwriting standards. You know, mm -hmm. back in the in the previous crisis, you saw underwriting and, and loan proceeds sometimes in excess of 100 percent of the value of an asset. Yeah, made no sense. Uh, mm -hmm. There's nothing like that happening now. So uh, we're utilizing those markets uh, to our to benefit our shareholders, you know, as we can. So do you expect, with all that in mind, to be a net seller and net buyer this year? We're not planning to sell anything mm -hmm. at the moment. Uh, you know, we've gotten the portfolio where we want it in yeah. terms of uh, strategic portfolio composition. Uh, we might buy. Mm -hmm. uh, the constraint on buying now is capital, mm -hmm. right? And and because of some of these trends I've mentioned, the public equity markets are not valuing mm -hmm. uh, equity very highly, and that that tends to be a source of capital for REITs uh, mm -hmm. in order to grow and you know if you if you're at your leverage target which we are mm -hmm. right? so so we don't have uh, an intention to increase our leverage dramatically to make acquisitions so instead we have to build our, our balance sheet overall and that's dependent on getting the right cost of capital out of the public equity yeah. markets uh, so we're looking towards that now correct me if I'm wrong but you guys were participating in the Ashford um, enhanced return yeah, financing right. program just like yeah. your colleagues over at Ashford Trust just <clears throat> utilize it a bit less just because of the way the year came together for you yeah is that gonna move the needle for you this year in terms of I mean obviously the idea behind that is to make more deals look more attractive correct yeah uh, so we signed up that deal about a year ago mm -hmm. and upon announcement we immediately uh, went under contract to acquire the Ritz-Carlton and Lake Tahoe. Mm -hmm. So we originally had a $50 million uh, budget from uh, Ashford Inc. Mm -hmm. We utilized $10 million to make that acquisition, so that reduced mm -hmm. our basis you know, pretty you know, seriously. Uh, so that was good. Now we have $40 million remaining. Mm -hmm. So uh, to the extent we can acquire assets this year, uh, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll intend to utilize it. Uh, but we have this year and next year to do so, at which time we'd have to renegotiate an extension of that agreement. Mm -hmm. So just what are your general broad expectations for the new year? Well, you know, I think for the industry generally, I, I have no reason to disagree with the kind of, you know, minimal rev par growth and mm -hmm. expense escalations. I think for us, Braemar, the story is very different. Mm -hmm. and it's very different because of the capital that we've invested into our assets over the last two years. Mm -hmm. So we've invested over $50 million into just the two conversions. Mm -hmm. uh, the courtyards to autograph. Those will bear fruit in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the Ritz Carlton St. Thomas now back online as of November 22nd, going mm -hmm. from no rev par to significant yeah. rev par growth. So, okay. our results for the next year should look industry leading mm -hmm. uh, we'll, with, with very high rev par growth. I think on the expense side, you know, we'll, we'll definitely be uh, adding EBITDA. Mm -hmm. uh, absent major escalations in costs. And I think that's mm -hmm. that's going to be a little bit of the headwind for us. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if we didn't have this superior rev par growth, I would be concerned. I'm not concerned because I know we, we have this pretty much uh, accounted for. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm uh, very confident that uh, we'll continue to perform very well relative to our peers uh, throughout the next year.
Well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me, Richard. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Okay, bye.